And I ask you this morning, has that song, God Bless America, has it become merely a song or is it still the prayer of our hearts? Should God bless America? That might be a good question. Will God bless America in the days ahead? And what would a God-blessed America look like? With all the evil that is transpiring in our country today, I believe that God is calling his people to repent and to seek his face again. In other words, we need revival in our land. And before we experience revival as a nation, we must experience revival in our churches. And for us to experience revival in our churches, we have to experience revival on a personal level. One of the most moving prayers recorded in the Bible concerning revival is Psalm 80. And I invite you to open your Bibles this morning to Psalm 80. It's the prayer of a patriot for a national revival and a spiritual restoration of his people. But here in this psalm, we find the secret. We find the secret to God's blessing upon a nation. Psalm 80, I'd like to begin reading in verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, Thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. Verse 3, turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine and we shall be saved. Drop down to verse 7. Turn us again, O God of hosts. And cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Drop down to verse 19. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. If you don't have those three words underlined in your Bible or highlighted or maybe circled, you ought to do that here this morning. Verse 3 again. Turn us again. Verse 7, turn us again. Verse 19, turn us again. There is a very important principle in these verses that we must not forget, and it's this. The way to be blessed by God again is to turn back to God. Am I right? That's what we see here in these verses. The way to be blessed by God again is to turn back to God. You see, it wasn't God who had turned away from them, but they had turned away from God. They were the ones who needed to turn, not God. And my friend, that basic principle is still true today in 2017, and it is applicable to the United States of America. Notice according to verse 4 that all of our prayers are in vain until we spiritually turn back to him. Look at Psalm 80 verse 4. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? The prayer of an unrepentant people is an insult to an almighty God. Religion without righteousness is nothing but stench in the nostrils of God. And we have a lot of religion in the United States of America today, but we don't have a whole lot of righteousness. Righteousness comes from God. And we need to recognize that God is the only solution to the problems that we have in the United States of America today. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Again, emphasizing the emptiness of having just religion with no righteousness, which is found through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Too much of us are praying, God bless us, when in reality what we need to be praying is, God bless change us. 
God change us. God is not pleased when we come to worship him on Sunday, but then we wallow in the cesspools of sin Monday through Saturday. For many years now, and I must confess that my father-in-law who pastored in West Columbia, South Carolina, used this little saying for years and years, so it's not original, uh, but I got it from him. But often he would tell his people on a Sunday night, don't forget to be a Christian seven days a week. (laughs) One of the problems across America is that we're acting like a Christian on Sunday But we're not acting like a Christian Monday through Saturday. Yes, there is a serious spiritual problem in our country. But there is also a serious spiritual problem in our churches across America today. It is the church of Jesus Christ. That is, we as God's people who need to repent and seek God's face. 